In the next lesson, I would like to prove to you that all motions in the left hand of the fingerboard grow out of one basic waving seed, if you could make that analogy. It is true that we have to vibrate, that we have to shift, that we have to use different fingers, but all of these begin at the same point, and perhaps we can begin at that point now. First of all, I would like to give you two basic exercises, merely to strengthen the fingers. These have nothing to do with the motion, with the proper undulating motion, which we will speak of immediately afterwards. We must always think in terms of two directions. The one outward, away from our body, pulling the violin away, the other inward. Supposing in the outward direction, and again we must never forget that whenever we pull in the outward direction, we must combine it always with a little lift. We go into the extended position of the finger. The finger is extended and pulling away. Keeping up the same pull, we bring the finger by its own efforts into the bent position. And then we can release slowly, or we can release quickly. Both must be practiced. We pull in, and we release out. In the opposite direction, we begin with the folded position. We are pushing, pushing the violin into our necks. Our arm, our forearm is coming closer to us. And with the finger's own strength, it extends itself against this push. It releases slowly, or it can release quickly. It's like a spring action. And this should be done with each finger on each string in about three different positions on the fingerboard. Approximately here, not at the very end, because you won't have space to, to spring back. Approximately the middle of this neck. Again, somewhere where the shoulder begins to be felt, the shoulder of the violin, and again above the shoulder. That is the first exercise. Would any of you like to see this next one a little more closely? Rosemary, you bring your stool, I'll sit down, and then you can watch while standing. Now look carefully. Continuing with this idea of effort and release, we have three ways of going from a lower position, that is, this part of the fingerboard, to a higher, and equally three ways of bringing ourselves down. The first is simply an alternate motion of direction away and back, with the stress on the away and back, away and back, away and back. The second is what the children call a caterpillar, when it's repeated a few times. In this case, we pull the violin away from us, bring our knuckles in, and release the hand. And if done several times, looks like the caterpillar indeed. The third way is what they call a catapult. And that is when we begin in the bent position, still pushing the violin towards us, pushing the knuckles back, sort of getting our enormous spring and then releasing. In, pushing the knuckles back, and the arm, which wants to go towards us, is being restrained by the finger. We release the finger and it comes up. Now, the three ways to descend the fingerboard. We begin again in the bent position towards our body, and alternate with the other direction. Only this time the stress is in the upwards, towards us direction, and releases the other way. The next way down is bent again, 
pushing, then it's the caterpillar, pushing the knuckles out, and this is... And the third way is the beginning extended, pulling away from us, bringing the knuckles in, and we have our catapult when we release. The arm is pulling away from us, and when we unbend the finger, we, we go away. These three ways should be practiced, of course, on all the strings with each finger, including the fourth, never forget the fourth, and in at least two parts of the fingerboard, shall we say, from the neck to the shoulder and from the shoulder of the violin to about here. Is that clear, Rosemary? Yes. Good. Well, then we can go on to the next point. You probably remember that when we were dealing with the bow, we used two smack bounces, one in each direction, to connect the directions. And when we played triplets, triplet rhythm, we were able to keep that going all the time. Now, we will do the same thing with the left hand. If we do one smack bounce in the backward direction, we get this motion. And in the forward direction, we get this one. If we connect them in triplet rhythm, we have smack bounce, smack bounce, smack bounce, smack bounce. It sounds rather awful, but don't you worry about that. It sounds like a cat meowing. That's perfectly all right. It's a good, healthy sound for a young violinist. These motions should also be every pair in a circle. So that actually, in the groups of six, you have three twice. One, two, three, one, two, three. But you also have every two a circle. And don't forget the lift in the circle. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. I think I've proven my point now that at least two of the motions associated with the left hand, the vibrato and the shifting, are born of the same motion. If this motion is restricted to a narrow amplitude and accelerated in speed, you get your vibrato. And if we allow the finger to move... Well, having done all these exercises, you should be now able to attempt some of these I would like to show you. You remember our backwards and forwards triplet motion. We can apply it now to broken thirds, fourths, fifths, as we care. One, two, three, one, two, three. If we wish to do them faster, we lose the two, three. We do one, one in this way. We can apply that as well to other intervals. That's the fourth. As we know, it is a vertical motion of the fingers. It must, however, be coordinated with the horizontal, our famous waving motion in the knuckles, immediately behind the fingers, and indeed with the wrist and with the forearm. We do this in triplet rhythm again, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is the natural way for the finger to fall when it is in playing in one position. However, when we shift positions in this way, 
it is more natural because of the major movement of the forearm to incorporate the finger fall in this way. The finger falls, this finger, say, falls as we move down, so it becomes a fall in the outward motion instead of in the inward motion of the forearm, this way. Oh. And this is, of course, very useful in scales with pairs of fingers or sec two and three or three and four. This is applied to double stops when we use two pairs of fingers in this way. arpeggios on one string where we remember the arpeggios we did with one finger which is the basis of this shifting with pa in pairs of fingers one motion for each shift which is the motion that we applied when we went into high gear as it were with the double motion with the, with the pairs of fingers one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, not worrying any longer about several shakes on one note. Single movement, one wave to two notes. into the natural rhythmic vibrating motion of the hand as, as did every other action of the fingers. This lateral action is one which normally only the violinist himself sees. But I'd like to show it to you. You'll be doing it and you might as well see how it works. You will notice that going down in the scale, the third and second fingers have to span two strings in order to roll off the one. This rolling action is necessary whenever we play fifths to correct them to the proper pitch. Playing fifths in a higher position has other problems. And in addition, I might say, and that is that the strings are wider apart and higher above, above the fingerboard. This means that a finger playing might easily fall in between the strings, which wouldn't do. Therefore, we pull the strings together and we enable any finger to play. Or... So that's adjusted. The first finger having no one to pull behind it, pulls the string itself, rolls over on the other, and allows them to settle in the medium position. Like that. Speaking of pressure on strings, we have chords that require even more, as three or four fingers may hold the strings down at the same time. This requires great elasticity and strength, and you had better not try these until you have developed your hands sufficiently. I wonder if I might enjoy some of the fruits of my labors. John and Elizabeth, would you like to play something for me? Mm -hmm. 